Um, Proverbs chapter uh, 14, verse 18 says that the simple will inherit folly. Proverbs 14, 18, the simple will inherit folly, but to the prudent, they are crowned with knowledge. In Proverbs 18, Proverbs 14, verse 18, in Proverbs 14, verse 27, says that the fear of the Lord is a fountain of life. And those that have the fear of the Lord, they depart from the snares of death. What snares are, are things that Satan has set up so that you would harden your heart against God. Like your backslide, your sin, like you'll never go all the way into the will of God. You'll go to a degree, but then you'll stop. It's a curse when you never enter the zone of fully surrendering to God. It's a curse. Because from generation to generation, people have started off with the Holy Spirit. They walked with him with him until a degree. They never achieved a hundredfold. They never achieved the blessing of Abraham. They never achieved the fullness of the word of God coming to pass, which is a curse. It is a curse when you develop two Holy Ghosts in your mind. There's not two Holy Ghosts. The children of Israel, the reason why they was fighting Moses' decisions was because they was not of God. Not because God just had them with another revelation. Are you seeing? Korah didn't rise up against Moses because God was giving Korah another revelation. Korah died. Because Korah was cursed. Korah was of the devil. In 1 John chapter 4, verse 1, it says, Beloved, be, believe not every spirit. It says, try the spirits to see if it be of God. You try spirits. Because you recognize, okay, how is this complementing the, original, the originality of, of what the Holy Spirit wanted me to do. If God tells me to go to Nineveh, what spirit is going to be rising up things in my mind to be so disgusted with Nineveh that I don't want to go? I can try the spirits and recognize this is not of God. If you see Jesus walking on the water and you say, Lord, if this is you, bid me to come. He says, come. You're walking on the water. What spirit will have you start listening to the winds and the waves and the roaring of the tide and all the commotion going on in the sea? What spirit will make you listen to that? Would it be God? No. Because now you're not going to keep on walking on the water. I'm telling you this. First John chapter four, verse one is revealing to you how to try spirits that you must try spirits rather. You got to recognize what spirit am I listening to now? Yes, I was listening to God, but what spirit am I listening to now? You could change the spirit that you listen to. You can listen to the Holy Ghost on September the 11th and listen to the devil on September the 12th. You could change the spirits that you listen to. Every thought that comes into your brain is not from God. And if you follow a thought that's not from God, you are being guided to subject yourself to a spirit that's not of God. So I, I want to show you this. And this is the crazy thing about life. Oftentimes people act like they never listen to a demon. You act like you never follow the demon spirit. You, you act like every time you did something, it was God telling you to do it. Every time you said something, it was God telling you to say it. Every time you thought something, it was God giving you the thought. You act like you never obeyed a demon. That's the thing about man. So when you get with your man of God, how do you know that every thought that you have 
concerning your man of God is from God. How do you know? Because remember, you have a history of obeying demons in different areas of your life, whether it is sexually, whether it is uh, prescriptionally, <laughs> your Oxycontin spirits, <laughs> your of all spirits, huh? Viagra spirits. Forty-eight hours spirits. I'm not talking about murder. Forty-eight hours spirits. So how is it when you get with your man of God, you think that no demons will ever speak to you? They spoke to you all throughout your life and they were able to successfully get you to obey at certain parts of your life. Saints, if you want to be honest, you don't have children because it be the will of God. Sometimes you have children because you're listening to a demon. The demon guides you to have a child. It's not God. It wasn't in God's schedule. It's not in God's book. It's just you. You have your will. You go to the hospital. It don't be in God's schedule. You get sick. It don't be in God's schedule. A demon is guiding your life. Guide you straight to the hospital. You get diagnosis with sickness. That sickness, that disease, don't be God's will. You're being led by a demon spirit. If you want to be honest, demons lead you all the time. So when you get with your prophet of God, your prophet enters in your life, enters into your life, it is a 911 moment. It is a 911 moment because your soul is on the way to hell. And the Holy Spirit is interjecting, attempting to stop it. Your soul is on the way to the lake of fire. And the prophet of God is an experiment from God. To attempt to save you because you're stubborn, you're wicked, and you believe that God is with you and he's not. He comes to you in the form of a prophet to come instruct you. You notice, I was telling you about the woman at Zarephath. The Bible said, God said that he told Elijah, I have commanded her. But when Elijah saw her, she did not say, oh, God commanded me. She don't know God's voice. You tell me how she don't know God's voice. But yet God said that he commanded her. So why she didn't hear it? She don't know him. She don't know who he is. But you know, she a religious woman. Because when her son died, she said, have you come to judge us for our sin? How she know about sin and judgment? She a religious woman. She understand that. Then she said, now I know that you're a man of God when he rose her son from the dead. So she aware of that. She a religious woman. But how she don't know his voice. The Bible said in John chapter 10, my sheep know my voice. Another one they will not follow. So she don't know his voice because she not his sheep. But yet he told Elijah, I have commanded her. I've spoken to her. But she don't know his voice. She don't know who God is. When your prophet come into your life, it will be exposed to you whether you really know God or not. How you treat that prophet. If you find yourself attacking that prophet, you know for sure you ain't got to check your thermostat, your blood type. You don't got to check your blood pressure. You know for sure that you are a child of the devil. You know that. You don't have to be. Listen, I could look at my life, how I responded to Dr. Mike Murdoch. I know I'm a son of God. Because when I got with Dr. Murdoch, I never saw. Oh. 
So I want you to understand when we deal, when we deal with you having the Holy Ghost, you'll know that you have the Holy Ghost on how well you could agree with your man of God. If you can't agree with them, you, do, you know that you have demon spirits in control. You know. Because saints, what happens is you don't pick when God is with you. Even Moses had to pray, Lord, go with me. He's praying because Moses not in control of that. God in control of that. He decides when he reveals himself to you. He decides when he chooses to talk to you. He decides when he chooses to manifest himself. John chapter 14 verse 21 says that he that hath my commandments and keepeth them, it, he it is that loveth me, and he will be loved of my father, and I will love him, and I will manifest myself to him. Look at, look at the stance that the Lord taking. He's saying, I'm going to manifest myself to him when I'm ready. 